let's stick with health care for a few more minutes, and let's move on to some other subjects uh, in addition to access and coverage. Health care disparities, for example. The infant mortality rate in the United States among African Americans is almost twice that as for whites. What do you do about that problem? How do you attack it? Well, uh, Medicare for All uh, has uh, equal distribution of health care. Everyone has access. The problem is, under the present system, uh, it's based on ability to pay. And people who tend to be in, uh, in minorities tend to have less ability to pay. And so we want to make sure that everyone's covered. And that's what Medicare for All does. I mean, my proposal doesn't have that kind of problem. There's not a lack of access. This current system created that problem. Although in some minority communities across the country, the problem with access has to do with the actual ability to find a doctor, to find a hospital that's nearby. Well, let me give you an example of that. I mean, I, I'm the chairman of the Domestic Policy Subcommittee, and we recently held hearings on where uh, Medicaid, uh, through private insurers, through, through HMOs and, and private providers, uh, aff afforded people in the inner city, children, dental care. We found out when we checked on a case involving DeMonte uh, uh, Diamond, right. this young 12-year-old boy who died with, a, with an abscess tooth. We found out that all the people were on a, on a provider list. We called, my office called 21 of those providers. None of them provided the care that would have saved uh, DeMonte, and, and they, or they weren't even, even operating anymore. So there is a scam going on where the government gives huge amounts of money to the private sector to provide care and to people in poor areas, and the care isn't being delivered. I mean, there, that's also wrapped up in this Medicare overpayment scandal, which is really the, the track towards Medicare privatization. I'm trying to save this country's health care system away from the privatization track, away from the for-profit insurers, and create a system which truly is Medicare for all. Medicare is in trouble right now because of the clutches that these private insurers have on the health care system. And also the, the coming of the baby boomers' retirement and the pressures that will put on Medicare well. Not as well, not necessarily. I mean, you know, let's say that you make health a defining purpose in this country, and let's say it's not for profit. You can meet the needs of the people because what happens is when people are able to get the care they need when they need it, it doesn't drive the cost up so much. You go to any inner city emergency room, and you'll see that people will flock to emergency rooms uh, as, the, as a uh, first uh, provider. A source Whether, of primary care. Right. right. But yeah. you know what? If, if people know they can go to a doctor and aren't going to have to worry about getting you know, a, a bill later on, that's not going to be a problem. So I think that we're at the threshold of a transition in American health care. And, and I'm the agent of change here, pushing in this presidential election to show that it can be done. These other candidates, there are serious questions about, you know, of corruption, really, as to whether or not candidates can take money from private health insurers and, and, and really serve the interests of the American people. Is there, in your view, anything happening at the moment at the state level in Massachusetts, Vermont, California, that could be instructive? Well, the Massachusetts, for example, has seen that they couldn't keep up with the demand for care. And so they had rising costs. They couldn't keep up with the rising costs. They couldn't deliver on what they promised. And I think that's going to be the case in every state. California made an initiative. Governor Schwarzenegger turned it upside down. I think the people, the, the only way to really resolve this is to have a national system because we have a national infrastructure. We have a national network. We have, we have a na uh, Medicare, for example, 3% for the cost of administering the paperwork as opposed to 15 to 30 percent in the private sector. If you organize this nationally, you're going to have dramatic savings. And that's the whole idea. Make health care affordable and accessible. And what country in the world would you point to and say, this is a model that the United States should em emulate? This is how I could see us in 10 or 15 years? Well, I think we don't have to go 10 or 15 years. I mean, I, my plan is to have a much faster transition. But you don't have to go too far. I mean, I stood at the, uh, at, in Detroit the other day, looked across the Detroit River. People over in Canada are covered. They have coverage. Now, people are saying, well, Canada's rationing health care. Do you know, we spend twice. <laughs> in the United States, we spend twice what the Canadians spend on health care per capita. So we have enormous resources here. There's no reason to even suggest that in the United States, uh, there'd be rationing based on, on, on the uh, Medicare for all. But the truth of the matter is, we have rationing right now based on a for-profit system, and it's only going to get worse. There's going to be more people 
not being able to f afford health care, lacking access to health care. So I'd say Canada is as good as any right now. And yet in Canada, you constantly hear stories about people who need surgery today and maybe get it four months later. And in the United States, you hear stories about people who don't get any care at all and they die. So, you know, I, I, I think that, that you asked me for one comparison, mm -hmm. Canada's comparison. People in Great Britain have health care. Every other industrialized nation has cares for the people. And, and, the, and the, the real important thing to keep in mind about the system that I'm talking about, it covers not only uh, basic health care needs and preventive care, but also vision care, how much families spend for vision care, dental health, mental health, which in many cases is still fighting for parity, prescription drugs with the Medicare Part D, you still have the scam of the private uh, pharmaceutical companies ripping off the government, and it also covers long-term care, which the baby boomer generation, as it comes of, uh, of senior age, is going to need long-term care. This covers it all. Why should anyone have to give up his or her home just simply because they happen to uh, find some illness that requires long-term care? So I'm, I've thought this out. And one other thing I want to share with you. Now, I, I grew up in the inner city in Cleveland. Well, I was going to ask if at any time in your life or the lives of people close to you, were you uninsured? Did personal experiences somehow drive you to this vision of where you're at today? Well, I grew up in a big family, the oldest of seven. You know, my parents never owned a home, but my dad was a, a teamster. He did have health insurance. But there's still doctor bills that, that, that were not covered by the basic insurance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I remember our mailbox filling up with, uh, uh, with bills, de demands to pay. So, yeah, I mean, I remember, you know, it didn't cover everything. I mean, when you have seven kids, you have all kinds of needs that aren't going to be covered. And so it had, some, it had pretty good basic care as insurance policies went years ago. But, but because I grew up in a city and I still live in a city, I see all these people who don't have care. And, you know, it's not only the city anymore, it's affecting the suburbs as well. I talked to the head of a major hospital the other day. He told me that not only has his charity care increased dramatically, but also people not paying from the suburbs, not being able to pay the bills because they, they went bare on their health care coverage mm -hmm. or they uh, lost their job and lost their insurance. See, under the system I'm talking about, there's no more problems and worries about whether you have a job or not, whether you, whether you can go without insurance, small businesses are protected, and our major industries like auto, automotive, look at uh, Ford and GM, $2 billion, uh, I think it was each, they, they were short because of their health care expenses. That's no longer a problem. This will be great for American competitiveness. It's one of the reasons why, for example, Canada has had a little bit more industrial strength as of late because they provide health care for their industrial workers. Congressman Kucinich, thank you so much. I really appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you. The Kaiser Family Foundation presents Health08.org, election news, analysis, and events.